Hello and welcome to this look at one of the new features in Worldographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program, and what we are going to look at is the new uh, Make Dungeon Morph uh, Map functionality, which is an improvement on uh, what was there before. So to get started, uh, now I just have a, a sample one behind us here, uh, just to show an interesting graphic as the video starts. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the File menu, Make Dungeon Geomorph Map. And now prior to doing this, you're going to want to go to the Wodographer website and look for, um, in the advanced instruction, there, there's uh, text instructions of basically this, as well as a link to a zip file with a number of, um, a number of Worldographer files for these maps. Uh, these are done as 10 by 10 maps uh, with a 10, 10 foot per square scale, but you're going to see how we can change that as well. Um, so you would unzip that, put it somewhere on your computer so that you can choose it in a moment. Here, uh, what we're doing is uh, by default, it's saying a uh, number of tiles across per map, and this is set to 20. So as I said, those uh, maps that we had created are 10 by 10. So this is uh, meant if you want a five foot per, per square thing, you can double it by checking this box here to double it. And then this is saying, how many of those maps do you want to have going across and how many do you want high? Uh, so this is going to result in a map that's 100 squares by 80 squares. So we can hit OK here. And as I said, that's going to bring up a file chooser where I've unzipped all of those files. And I'm going to skip the caves, uh, but I'm going to just pick from forges all the way down to the end of the list here. Hit open. And then it's going to randomly pick between those. And it's also going to randomly rotate. You can see how this one here was a 6G just before the screen changed. So it's simultaneously picking 20 of those because we picked a four, five by four uh, number of maps. So it's going to pick uh, 20 of those and place them down. Now by default, uh, it's going to load them in our realistic graphics mode, if you will. This is with uh, more realistic looking doors and you can see a forge here and so forth. To toggle that to the simple uh, line art style, you would go up here to tools, click switch uh, the icons to the simple style, and you get this. Now, when we double the the maps, uh, double the, the the size basically uh, to from a uh, five or uh, ten foot square to a five foot square, um, that doubles the number of squares we're going to have. We do resize, for example, if I find a stair, these stairs um, are meant to kind of be a large uh, um, a platform so you can, um, so that those were, those were doubled in size. Likewise, the ones down here were doubled in size because the corridors were also doubled in size. Also, the bars for a cell are doubled in size, but the other graphics are not. So this altar here um, is still the, you know, the original size from the original design. Uh, likewise, this coffin, you know, you're not going to necessarily double the size of your coffins uh, to be, you know, originally it's, you know, what, eight feet or so. Um, you're not going to double double the size to 16 feet on, on this diagram here uh, by default. Now, because this is Worldographer, it's all fully editable. So there are some things like these fountains, because they were not doubled in size, they need to be tweaked a little bit. And so we can go to, I'm sorry, the features drawer here. And we can go ahead and select, uh, the, hit select, uh, and then select that particular feature. And here we can we can override the size, and we can make it say 160, um, so that it looks like it needs a little bit more than that. But but we can uh, increase the size to get it like that. Or if I slide over, I think oh, okay. So there's some others here. Or we can pick a different feature, and I can kind of slide it up against the wall as well. Your choice of, of how you want to resolve that kind of a thing. Another thing you're going to come across is uh, you're going to have some of these corridors leading off to the edges. Because Worldographer, or because these are based on our dungeon geomorphs, those uh, designs are 10 by 10 with two uh, corridors leading off on each side. Um, you're going to have some of those leading off the edge of the map. And again, because this is Worldographer, you can go to the shapes drawer here. You can select the shape here, and I can uh, perhaps you know delete that whole shape if I want to delete this one as well. Once I get it selected there. Um, so I can delete that whole shape and then I can go to the terrain and I can set this to floor if it's not already uh, selected. And I know that this is the, the, the stone floor filled in pattern. So I can pull that up 
And then if I want to make this, uh, I could delete those, or if I wanted to have a, another secret door there, I can add another line, my choice. So I can go to shapes here, uh, select the shape here, and I can delete that. Or actually, maybe this case, I'll just do a, another line going across there. Features, I can then pick a secret door from the features list and then um, uh, put that there. So uh, you can you can edit all those as needed, to, or you can also just kind of hand wavy be like, yeah, I'm the only one viewing this map. I know that those corridors don't exist, so I'm gonna I'm gonna drop those, and, and at least in in my own mind. Um, so that's how you can how you can manage that. And um, as you can see, they were all rotated randomly, some by some not at all, some 90 degrees, some 180, some 270. Um, so what if uh, you have a map that you in mind where you want to have um, a, a worship area in a certain spot and a guard barracks area in a short, certain spot? In that case, uh, related to this is uh, we can do this open into a map and we can pick these dungeon geomorph files and place them exactly where we want. So what we can do uh, to get started with that is to go to new map um, and just start a, a, a simple one. This is 20 by 20, so we're not going to double the size. In this case, we're going to deal with it being um, 10 foot corridors um, so that we can put uh, four of these maps on here. We can, we can put one here, one there, one in each corner. So uh, once I've got that map 20 by 20, so but again, you know, if I wanted to do, uh, if I wanted to double it in size for five foot square, and I wanted four maps uh, for the dungeon geomorphs there, I would make it 40 by 40. Uh, or if I wanted it to be three by two maps, then I could do you know 60 by by 40 and so forth. So I can go to open into the map, and I'm going to put the first one in the upper left corner. So that's going to be zero zero. Uh, that's where I want that that that. That's where the uh, map is going to be based. Its, its upper left will be in that particular corner. Um, we won't rotate it this time. We're not going to double it in size because, as I said, we're going to go for the 10 foot scale like the maps were originally drawn. Hit OK. Brings us a file chooser. Ask which one do you want? Okay, so in this case, I want to have a alter file and I want to use the file that Dyson had originally created. Now, of course, it doesn't have his hatching pattern and all that kind of stuff. This is something where we made uh, these files uh, for the blue line art old school files. And again, we can go to the switch to simple style. And that's uh, what they were based on. And the card manufacturer and the dice manufacturer made their versions based on these simpler versions without some of the uh, additional embellishments that, that, that Dyson uses. Okay, so then once we got that one, now we can go to the next one and we can say open into the map and we can say, okay, so if we're going to do this in the upper right hand corner, let's do zero or 10, zero. And this time we'll rotate it just to show that happening again. We're not going to double. And then we hit okay. And let's say in this case, we want to find um, some guard rooms here. And let's say that I'm going to use the design that Sigurd Johansson had created for us. Hit open. And there you go. That's what we've got for that design, and so forth. So you get the idea. You can pick another one. Pick the uh, uh, zero ten in this case uh, over here, and then pick ten ten for the one that will be have its upper left corner here. And you can get that all done. And likewise, just like what we went over, uh, you can uh, block off these exits and and or change the corridors around as as desired. I should point out that this is all, again, I actually I think I did, that, that we, this is in version 1.39. Uh, we had it in, in prior versions, but there were a couple of bugs with it as far as the rotation goes and the scaling goes. It wasn't quite doing that for all the objects on the map. So if you get the latest, uh, you're going to get the best results with that. Again, uh, I hope that uh, you like this feature. I should point out that it was brought to you by our Patreon backers. Every month they get to vote on a new feature to add to Worldographer, as well as a new uh, theme for a, a set of icons. We, we release 100 new icons following a particular theme that's chosen by our backers each month. So again, I hope this helps you out with uh, using this feature in Worldographer, and uh, stay tuned for some more mapping tutorials. Thanks.